Yeah, we'll give it till about 6.05. Just let some more people trickle in. Welcome in, Vice Mayor, JR. I see you guys on here. How's it going? We're back again, uh, Vice Mayor. I feel like I've had one every month with District <laughs> 1 with you guys. I know. What does this mean? <laughs> My goodness. We got Mitzi with El Paseo. Now we got this one. Chris, uh, do you have a question? Uh, no, I received the, the indication that you wanted me to unmute, so I assumed you wanted me to ask something or give me some information. Oh, your uh, hand is raised. That's the reason why I unmuted uh, again to see. Okay, I'm okay. going to just... Rena Sneeda, what do you say? Should we uh, get started? Let some more people trickle in. It's 6.05. Um, I'm going to say that we should start unless, Laura, you have any thoughts? Yep, we can get started. All right, love it. Hello, everybody. My name is Alec Atienza, and I am a planner on the planning development review team. So we're gonna start up the meeting. Hopefully more people trickle in right now. We have about five folks on the attendees side. Um, so let's just kick it off. Uh, first, I'm going to go over the agenda for the night. Uh, so wanna give everybody introductions, who's here. So again, my name is Alec Atienza and I am a planner on the planning and development review team, the city's planning division. And I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Rena and Court. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rina Horie, and I am on the citywide planning team under general plan and analytics. Thanks, Rina. Hi, I'm Court Hitchens. I will uh, present about the environmental review for this a little bit later. Thanks, Court. And then we also have some folks from Public Works as well. If you have any Public Works questions, we also have uh, Renzel from the Public Works traffic team. And then we have supervising planners, Sunita Gozal and Laura Miners, also with the planning division. Um, and we also have a, a whole host of uh, folks from the applicant team as well, and we'll let them introduce themselves when they make their presentation. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to introduce the vice mayor and her staff as well. If you want to say a few words, vice mayor, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Alec. Um, thank you for everyone uh, uh, who uh, is taking time out of their busy day to be here and to um, have uh, the information regarding the uh, Olin Hotel, as well as to be able to answer any questions that you may have regarding this application. I really appreciate it. And uh, I just wanna introduce my uh, staff, uh, J.R. Pruin. I'll, I'll have him uh, say hello. Hello, my name is J.R. Fruin. I am policy and legislative director here in District 1, serving the vice mayor. Thanks very much, JR and Vice Mayor. Really appreciate it. Uh, so I just want to go over the next steps for the agenda. So we're going to have the applicant present the project first, just so everybody can familiar, familiarize themselves with what the applicant is proposing. Uh, and then next, staff is going to provide a presentation. That's items three through five on the agenda. So we're going to go over just the project components, what the applications actually entail, 
um, specifically the special use permit, the general plan text amendment and general plan amendment, as well as the environmental review process. And then we're gonna reserve the bulk of the time for open forum. So if anybody has any questions or comments, that's when uh, you will have a chance to voice those questions or comments. Um, and then we're gonna adjourn at 7.30 p.m. tonight. So we just wanna be conscious of everybody's time. Uh, so with that, I'll stop talking and I will let the applicant present the project. Um, and Eric, or whoever needs to share your screen, you can go ahead and do so. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on one second here. Could we uh, introduce everybody with the design and development team first before we start flipping through a couple of slides here? What do you think, Alec? Oh yeah, please do, go for it. You've got some time, Mom. Feel free okay, to introduce wonderful. everybody. Wonderful, I'll, I'll uh, since I'm already talking. Uh, Eric Price with uh, Lowney Architecture, the project manager and uh, studio director here for our hospitality and commercial projects. Pleasure to be here and uh, give you a little overview uh, of our work and my colleague, Jung is here as well. Jung? Yeah, Jung Stahl from Lowney Architecture. I'm one of the senior designers working on the project. Nice to meet you, everyone. We've also Great. got yeah. with us from the design team here. Uh, let's see, Pete. There you are. Uh, Pete Smith with HMH, where the civil engineers and site development work, and I uh, will bounce it over to Dina Rosilli. Hi, Dina Marcelli, also with HMH Engineers. I'm a senior planner here, helping with the land planning and entitlement process. Kirk as well. Where are you, Kirk? I'm just kind of flipping through the heads on the screen here. There we are. Oh, you you want me? Hi, Eric. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, sure. everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Kirk, Kirk Pedersen. I'm um, the president of Sightline Hospitality. We are a hotel management company uh, that operates uh, hotel properties all over the country. Thank you, Kirk and Danae. What else have we got here? Hello, my name is Danae Hall with Kimley Horn. We work with the city on preparing the environmental document for the project. Thank you. We've also got uh, Mark and Jennifer as well. Oh, Jesse, Jesse's on the line too. <laughs> Hey everyone, great to be here uh, with Sightline Hospitality. Uh... Great. Uh, I'm Mark Cersini, the, the owner of the property and the applicant uh, here this evening. I welcome the, the community members that are attending this evening. Just a little background on myself. I happen to be uh, fast approaching my 65th year on October 7th, and I was born and raised on uh, Moore Park Avenue, just uh, just a little east of Winchester Boulevard. So uh, spent quite a bit of time in around this area as a young uh, individual riding my bike uh, through what was town and country is now Santana Row and uh, through the theater property when it was un actually under construction. So um, spent quite a bit of time here. My uh, grandparents uh, lived on Stevens Creek uh, Boulevard at the time. And uh, over the last 35 years, uh, my brother Ken and myself had been uh, doing development in and around San Jose, and uh, we love the community and very much uh, looking forward to moving this uh, hotel forward uh, to make it a reality. Thank you. And hi, everybody. I am Jennifer Jadoin. Um, I am assisting Mark in this uh, process and have worked with him for multiple, multiple years. So thank you for everybody attending tonight. Thank you. I think we got everybody. So why don't we just get, get to flipping through some slides here. Uh, this first slide is an aerial image of the of the area with Santana Row and the mostly commercial area here. Page page right. The little yellow box in the center represents the project site, and to the left, the more uh, lower density residential zone. What this is beginning to demonstrate here is that the project's really in a uh, in a bit of a transition zone, but uh, well within what's a uh, mixed use and, and uh, commercial zone. And uh, one of the things we're going to do, and we, we'll see in the images that are forthcoming, uh, our, the overall design goal really was to uh, limit impacts here, uh, visual and otherwise, on the residential neighborhood and uh, 
create a building that really fit in with both commercial uses on one side, residential uh, on the other. This is that uh, little yellow box you saw on the previous slide. Our overall site plan with Winchester still at the right side of the page. Spar Avenue, the more residential character street uh, to the left. The site diagrams demonstrating a couple things. One, uh, points of access and entry. Service, uh, pedestrian entries here in blue, vehicular entries in red. What we're seeing here is what we really strive to do is try to make sure that we could position as many of our driveways and access points away from SPAR, closer to Winchester, where they're better connected and the connectivity is back towards the commercial side. Right. And I think another important thing to point out is the massing of the building. The bulk of the massing is is really geared towards Winchester, since it is a much much more of a commercial street and has a lot of larger scale buildings. And so we try to set back as much as we can from, from Spar Avenue. One of, the, one of the other things this helps to do is that as we're pushing the, the construction, sort of page south and west, gives us an opportunity here in the northwest corner to uh, maintain a nicely landscaped area. We're keeping a couple of existing trees and a pretty good size. We'll add a few uh, into the mix. And uh, you know another way that we can buffer and, and uh, otherwise treat that west side of our of our project in a way that's appropriate for the for the residential scale. And then as we start to get into the architecture of the building and the design of the building, uh, you know, the first step that we always take a look at is really the context and, and what's, you know, directly adjacent to the site. And this is just a very, very simple diagram of the blue area representing commercial areas or mixed use areas and then the, the yellow representing the residential. So it's kind of in this location of the site where you're really, you are sort of abutting the residential and you're also within the, the larger sort of commercial zone there. And then really kind of understanding what the architecture is within the, within the neighborhood. You have the smaller scale residential on the left-hand side. And obviously the, everybody knows Santana Row and the type of architecture it is, it has a much more of a larger scale. You know, it's, it's broken down sort of vertically, you know, sort of changing styles as you go down the street. And then the, also there's a series of office buildings on Winchester that uh, were directly adjacent to and including the, uh, the parking garage. So then as we look at the main corner, this is Winchester and Olin. Uh, the side facing Winchester, which has sort of the bluish tile there, is again kind of responding to the context of Santana Row. A lot of the vertical fenestrations there, um, creating some sort of a rhythm and a pattern along Winchester. And then as you turn the corner towards Olin, and as you go down the street there, it softens up a little bit. We start to angle the floor plates a little bit more, and we start to introduce some of the sloping roof planes. Uh, the ground floor is really all about activity and permeability. Uh, we want to open the ground floor as much as possible. We want to create that active environment with the pedestrians. We're trying to create as much openings as possible there and also provide outdoor seating in that zone. So here's a close-up view along Winchester. Um, we have a secondary entry off of Winchester here for pedestrians uh, into the lounge, and it's also accessible to the, to the lobby. The left-hand side is some sort of a food and beverage, like a bar or a lounge. And then the right-hand side is also a food and beverage. But we really imagine this whole ground floor space to be a continuous space. So as you enter that space, you really feel like you're entering all three of those at the same time. It's, it's, it's really supposed to be one continuous space. And then, and again, we're trying to reduce the scale a little bit at the ground floor, introducing a canopy, provide a little bit of shelter. Uh, we have planters along the edges there just to create a little bit of buffer between the outdoor seating and the pedestrians in the street. But again, the idea is to have as many operable doors on Winchester as possible so that we can really be able to experience the indoor-outdoor experience. And then as you directly turn the corner on Olin, it's really the same thing, um, you know, getting it as active as possible, doing some sort of a, a sort of a feature light fixture at the corner so that it's, it's highly visible from, from the corner. And then you can see that up towards the left there, it sort of leads you into the into the, the drop-off zone. So this is looking sort of east. You can see a little bit of Santana Row on the right-hand side there. Mm -hmm. 
And we're trying to make that connection to Santana Row as, as friendly as possible. This is, uh, you know, what we're trying to do here is create some sort of a warmer palette for the entry. Um, reintroducing some of that tile that was on the main facade down at the base just to create that, that texture and color. And a little bit of landscaping to have some screening with, uh, with the pedestrians and the cars. And this is just one of the images from, from the second floor amenity deck. Again, I think we what we intend for this space to feel is just, it's really more of a quiet social zone. We have a lot of sort of relaxed kind of lounge seating there. We have fitness to the right-hand side. Um, we do have a pool there, but it's really more just, it's, it's a very you know, low depth pool, about a couple of feet. It's really just some place for you to be able to sit down and relax in the water. Um, the exterior perimeter of this deck is, is really surrounded by st a stone wall and a green wall. It gives it a little bit more privacy with the residential on the left-hand mm -hmm. side. We're also introducing a sort of a feature water wall just to create some nice ambient uh, sounds with the neighborhood. And then in the background over there, you see a little bit more casual seating, a little bit more um, sort of um, um, kind of food and beverage area on the back. Actually, focus a little bit more on the beverage, not necessarily food. Here? And this is actually a view from a, a conceptual view from a neighboring property. That pool area we were just looking at, that second level deck is sort of at the top of this image. Um, this is just a representation of a property line wall, again, continuing this uh, the importance of privacy and screening. For, for the neighborhood. Uh, this is still a work in progress, working with the adjacent uh, neighborhood neighbors to uh, finalize what this exact texture might be. So this is kind of a, uh, again, a work in progress. And you can see behind that wall, uh, a, a couple of trees that we'll be adding as, as part of the projects. And then finally, you know, talking about the material palette, I think you know, the, the main material that we're really focusing on is this tile or sort of a glazed brick um, on the main facade on, on Winchester. You know, we think this is a great opportunity to add some color and texture to, to the street. And then really on the ground floor, we're putting sort of the warmer palettes, such as the, the metal panels with the wood grains. So that again, we're, you know, anything that's you're closer down to the pedestrian level, we're trying to introduce that warmer palette there, you know, possibly having some core 10 steel planters at the bottom at the base also. And then as you transition towards Olin, it's, it's a very, very clean facade with sort of metal panels, standing seat metal panels with varying texture so that it gives you a little bit more of that, um, sort of that residential feel as we go down Owen. And that concludes the, the presentation portion. Happy to hand it back to staff. Awesome, thank you very much guys. Let me uh, so now, share here. yeah, let me, let me go back and share my screen. Let me get the PowerPoint back up here. Hold on just a minute. Here we go. So next, I'm just gonna go over the city side of things on this project. Um, so specifically the project components, we're gonna discuss the general plan amendment application, special use permit application and the environmental review process. Uh, so we're just gonna briefly go over those, myself, Rena and Court Hitchens, and then we'll open it up to the public for public discussion. So just to reiterate the site that we're talking about, uh, Eric, you guys did a great job of really setting the stage, but we just want to make sure everybody understands the site that we're talking about. Um, and in addition to 425 South Winchester, we're also talking about 390 Spar Avenue. So where the hotel will be located, as Eric mentioned, is at the corner of Olin and Winchester. So this Northwest corner here, and that is the the special use permit application, the general plan amendment, excuse me, the general plan text amendment, and uh, the, the environmental review for the hotel itself. 
Uh, that site is approximately 0.55 acres, so a little bit over half an acre, and that's where the gas station exists today. The existing general plan land use designation is mixed use commercial, and the associated zoning is mixed use commercial as well. Uh, so that supports hotel uses. We're also talking about 390 Spar Avenue. So that's behind the subject site. So this is at the corner of Spar and Olin. And that is a 0.22 acre site. So about roughly the size of your average single family lot. It's an existing business center and it currently has a land use designation of residential neighborhood and a single family zoning district. So just some context to set the stage for the applications that we're talking about tonight. So specifically for this project, there are three major applications that the city has received. So uh, the applicant has uh, applied for a general plan amendment, that's a GP 23-007. And that would change the land use designation of 390 Spar Avenue from residential neighborhood to mixed use neighborhood. So I'm just going to go back to this previous slide here so you see that. It's specifically this site here at 390 Spar Avenue would be changed from residential neighborhood to mixed use neighborhood. With that would also be associated with uh, conforming rezoning from the R18, which is your typical single family resident zoning district to the associated mixed use neighborhood zoning district. In addition to that application, we also have a general plan text amendment, and that is GPT 23-001. And that would change the Santana Row Valley Fair Urban Village Plan height for 425 South Winchester. So for the hotel site, uh, it would change the height as well as the setback and the daylight plan requirements when adjacent to residential or an urban residential designation. And we're going to get into a little bit more about what that means, but just understanding that those are the two applications for the general plan. For the actual hotel itself, the applicant has applied for a special use permit. That's file number SP23-005. And with that, that would authorize the removal of three trees on site, the demolition of that existing gas station that's there today, and the construction of an approximately 90,000 square foot hotel. And that hotel would have 176 rooms. As part of that application, uh, the applicant is also considering an alternative parking arrangement. So that would include valet and offsite parking arrangement. Um, in addition to that, they're also requesting a one-time 24-hour concrete pour, and that would occur on a Saturday uh, once the project gets under construction. Uh, but this is just high-level overview of what the, the applicant has applied for. So now we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about you know, how that could be achieved if the project is approved. So with that, I'll pass it off to my colleague, Rena. Rena, go for it. Thank you so much, Alec. Yes, so agenda item number four, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the general plan amendment and text amendment. So this is a presentation about what general plan is, what an urban village plan is, why we have these plans and how it relates to this project. A general plan is a state mandated document and the city's official policy document regarding its future character, land use patterns, and quality of development. Uh, Court, I mean, Alec, if you can go ahead and move to the next slide, please. Um, Rina, can you yes. hold on one second? I no see problem. I see a hand raised, so I just wanted to ask if Philly has any question, uh, and then we'll go back. We're not going to take questions right now, but I just want to figure out why. Um, Phyllis, well, you can unmute and talk. Do you need anything right now or we'll hold the questions for the end? Okay. I don't hear anything. Maybe, maybe he just raised hand by mistake. Uh, Rina, go ahead and I will get back to you, Phyllis, later on. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Sunita. Uh, yes, so as I was saying, uh, the general plan is a document that uh, is basically, uh, it's a document that talks about the future character, the land use patterns, and the quality of development uh, for the city. In other words, it offers a vision for the future, and it sets goals and major strategies to achieve them. It took several years of community engagement and hundreds of participants to finalize the general plan. The current plan is titled the Envision San Jose 2040 General Plan. 
2040 being the year we aim to achieve the goals outlined in the plan. Next slide, please. So within the general plan, there are many goals and policies, as well as the land use and transportation diagram, as you can see on this slide. This diagram maps out the planned land uses and transportation network throughout the city. Every parcel in the city has a specific land use designation. Sometimes we call this the colors of the map. Like the map legend on the right shows, each color signifies a different land use designation that identifies types and intensities of future development on that parcel. Next slide, please. So the general plan requires the development of urban villages that are active, walkable, and transit-oriented mixed-use settings for new housing and job growth. Urban village plans are prepared at a finer level of detail for a specific area when addressing land use and urban design. The map you can see on the slide shows the approximately 60 urban village areas identified in the general plan. General plan and urban village plans contain policies, guidelines, and standards. Modifying these plans requires a general plan text amendment application. And the process, which you will see on the next slide, is the same for a general plan amendment application and requires approval by the city council. Next slide, please. So what is it? Well, a general plan amendment is a process to change the existing land use designation for a particular site. So that means we change the color on the land use transportation diagram that you just saw. This change affects the allowed uses and the densities on a particular site. In a few slides, I will be showing you what the general plan amendment would be for this project and how that affects the uses and densities. A general plan text amendment is a process to change the text, such as policies or standards, and corresponding images in a general plan or urban village plan. The applicant submitted their general plan amendment application sometime around March. In the months of March through November, staff reviews the application for conformance with general plan policies and conducts environmental analysis. We include a community meeting, which is the purpose of today, to hear feedback from community residents. After the community meeting, staff will summarize the results of the policy analysis, environmental analysis, and public comments into a staff report for a November planning commission hearing. In early November, a hearing notice is sent out to inform the community about the upcoming planning commission hearing. And the last step would be to bring the staff report to city council for a final decision in December. Next slide, please. And now I'll go ahead and go into the specifics of the general plan text amendment as it relates to the project. The project site 425 South Winchester Boulevard is located within the Santana Row Valley Fair Urban Village Plan. This plan was adopted in August of 2017 by city council. The vision for the plan is to emphasize existing mixed use development areas and to provide interconnected network of open spaces integrated with public art, respecting the existing single family neighborhoods and improve bike and pedestrian connection within the village and to the adjacent neighborhoods. The map on the left shows the land use designations for the parcels within the Santana Row Valley Fair Urban Village Plan boundary. It is important to note that a standard is a requirement that must be met in future efforts, and a guideline is a recommendation that should be incorporated into future efforts. And just so you know as well, the 390 Spar Avenue is directly adjacent to 425 South Winchester Boulevard and is right outside of this boundary. And next slide, please. Now I'll go ahead and talk about the general plan text amendment uh, for 425 South Winchester Boulevard with the proposed building height amendment. The diagram on the left is a building height map of within the Santana Row Village, uh, Santana Row Valley Fair Urban Village Plan. Um, the existing height, which is shown in this light blue, is 65 feet. The proposed text amendment is a height change of 65 to 85 feet at this site. Next slide, please. The building placement and bulk standards that are in the Santana Row Valley Fair Urban Village Plan are different for residential and non-residential. 
Um, as you can see in the highlighted in the blue square, the rear setback for non-residential states a minimum of 10 feet. For new development adjacent to residential neighborhood and urban residential land use designations, the table references figure 5-3, which I will go ahead and show in the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. In addition to the height change, the applicant has requested a general plan text amendment for the side and rear setback and step back, also known as daylight plane, for the new development when adjacent to residential land use designations. The image on the left is figure 5-3. Uh, the proposed setback amendment is from 40 feet to 20 feet when adjacent to residential neighborhood land use designations. And the proposed step back or daylight plane amendment is from 45 degrees to 75 degrees when adjacent to residential neighborhoods land use designations. Next slide, please. And that was the text amendments. Now I will discuss the general plan amendment proposal for 390 Spar Avenue. The existing general plan land use designation for the 390 Spar Avenue site is residential neighborhood. This designation allows for a density of typically eight dwelling units per acre and a floor to area ratio of up to 0 0.7 or one to two and a half stories. This designation is intended for small lot single family residences. Next slide, please. The proposed general plan land use designation for the site uh, is mixed use neighborhood. This designation allows a density of up to 30 dwelling units per acre, but in this case, the site is approximately 0 0.22 gross acres, which calculates to a maximum of six dwelling units. This designation also has a floor to area ratio of 0 0.25 to 2.0 or one to three and a half stories. This designation supports commercial or mixed use development and it is used to provide transition between higher density and lower density neighborhoods. Next slide, please. And for your reference, here is a side-by-side -side of the existing residential neighborhood land use designation for 390 Spar Avenue and the proposed mixed-use neighborhood land use designation on the right. Next slide, please. The state of California passed a bill in 2018 called SB 1333 that requires conformity between the general plan and the zoning on a site, which is why we are presenting both the general plan land use designation and the zoning district. As part of the general plan amendment process, the city requires that applicants for a general plan amendment also apply for a rezoning so that the general plan land use designation and zoning district are conforming. So per state law, this site needs to be rezoned to a conforming zoning district. The site currently has an R18 zoning district, which is the typical zoning district used for single family homes. The maximum height for homes is 35 feet, which is approximately two and a half stories. Uh, the one in the R18 means that it is for single family homes, and the eight means that it supports up to eight dwelling units to the acre. The zoning supports single family homes and certain in home businesses. The zoning district is consistent with the existing residential neighborhood general plan land use designation. Next slide, please. The proposed zoning district for this site is MUN mixed use neighborhood, which will match the proposed mixed use neighborhood general plan land use designation. The maximum height for a detached single family or a duplex is 35 feet or two and a half stories. The maximum height for a townhouse or multiple dwelling, mixed use or commercial is 45 feet or about four stories. Next slide, please. And lastly, here is the side by side of the existing R18 zoning district and the proposed MUN mixed use zoning district. And with that, I will go ahead and pass it over to my colleague, Court, who will discuss the environmental review process. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Court Hitchens. I'm the environmental project manager for the city of San Jose uh, reviewing this project. So if we could get to the next slide, please, I'll just uh, walk you through the environmental review process uh, for the project. So um, this project will be evaluated under the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA. Um, CEQA is a state law that requires state and local agencies to disclose and evaluate the significant environmental impacts of proposed projects and to adopt all feasible mitigation measures to reduce or eliminate those identified impacts. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so, um, CEQA considers uh, or investigates all potential environmental impacts according to the CEQA guidelines Appendix G checklist um, that I've shown here on this slide. Um, all of these factors are going to be considered for this project. Um, and as you can see, this includes biological resources, air quality, noise, um, cultural resources, transportation, among other things. Um, that's just letting you know what we are looking at. Next slide, please. Great. Um, so for this project, we are preparing an initial study. An initial study, or an IS, as you might see, is a preliminary analysis prepared to determine the environmental impacts associated with a proposed project. An IS is designed as a measuring mechanism to determine if a project will have a significant effect on the environment, uh, thereby triggering the need to prepare a full environmental impact report, or EIR. Um, and an IS also contains information that supports conclusions uh, that the project will have a less than significant environmental impact or that impacts can be mitigated to uh, even a no impact level. Next slide, please. Um, so for this project, uh, as I mentioned, we are preparing an initial study and this initial, st st initial study is uh, to support a mitigated negative declaration uh, together that's considered an ISMND. Um, so what is a MND? Um, so if the IS shows no substantial evidence that the project may have a significant effect on the environment, um, a negative declaration or mitigated negative declaration may be prepared. Um, so in this case, for this project, um, the IS has identified potentially significant effects, um, but there is um, possibility th um, through mitigation measures that the project can be revised or uh, measures can be implemented to reduce the effects of the project to a less than significant level. Uh, next slide, please. So um, as I mentioned, we are currently in the CEQA process um, for this project. Uh, once the initial study is completed, the draft initial study is completed, it will be circulated publicly for 20 days. Uh, during that public circulation period, public agencies, interested organizations, and interested individuals um, are all able to review and provide comments or questions on the uh, circulated draft initial study. Following the conclusion of that 20-day public review period, um, the city will consider adopting the ISMND together with any comments received during the public review process, uh, and that would occur at a regularly scheduled uh, hearing. And then if the uh, MND is adopted, the city may proceed with project approval actions and permit issuance as um, my colleagues have discussed here. And uh, just an update for this one, we are nearing uh, circulation for this document. I do not have a specific date um, that we will begin the public review for 20 days, um, but I do foresee that happening within the next couple of weeks. Um, if you are interested in that, we will provide all of our contact information at the end of this presentation, um, and you can reach out to us to be included on our public noticing. Thanks, I think that's it for me. Awesome, thanks, Court. Uh, so Al Catienza back again, planning development review. So I just want to tie everything up and bring everything back to sort of a, a higher level so everybody understands uh, you know, where this project is headed. So as Court and Rena mentioned, this project is currently under review. So we are currently under the review process with the general plan amendment, text amendment, the rezoning, the special use permit, and the environmental review, as Court mentioned. Once that is entirely complete, the project will go to a planning commission hearing. Uh, so key thing to understand is that throughout this process, 
comments are accepted. Tonight, you can send us comments. We have our comment, we have our contact information at the end of the uh, slides here. Um, but at any point throughout this process, uh, you can send us comments or ask us questions. Uh, but note that at Planning Commission, public notice is provided and comments are accepted at that hearing as well. So when project review is complete, this project will go to a Planning Commission for a recommendation, okay, a recommendation. After that, it will go to City Council and that will be the final decision-making body. So you will receive notices. If you received a community meeting notice, you'll also receive a notice for this project. Uh, one thing that I do want to note is that if you did not receive a notice, you can reach out to me and we make sure that you're on that uh, list of interested parties. And again, we have our contact information at the end of the slides to add you to that list. Um, another important point to note. So the general plan amendment and the environmental review will be heard at Planning Commission and City Council. If those are approved, the special use permit, which is actually for the construction of the hotel, will be heard at a later hearing called a planning director's hearing. So that will also be a formally noticed separate hearing specifically for the construction of the hotel. So I just want to reiterate that again, the general plan amendment in the environmental review will be heard at a planning commission and city council. The construction of the hotel, the special use permit for that, will be heard at a separate director's hearing. Um, so with that, we will open it up to public comment. Uh, I see we have about 10 attendees on this site, so I'm not going to um, use the timer or anything. Uh, but Eric, maybe what I was going to ask you is, would you mind putting your slides back up while we have folks doing public comment? I think that's sometimes helpful for people. For an idea. Yep. I'll go ahead and. Yeah. If you could do that, that would be helpful. Yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll um, unmute anybody who has any questions or comments. If you use the raise hand function on your Zoom bar, um, you can you can ask us any questions or comments. Like I said, we had the applicant here as well as um, staff from multiple departments. Um, so so go for it. I'll start muting or unmuting people. Excuse me. Uh, so Bill, Bill Schaffer, you are unmuted. Go for it. Okay, so I guess I'm unmuted. Um, so I'm Bill Schaefer. I'm a resident on uh, Hanson Avenue, which is the next block over from SPAR. Um, I had a question. Uh, how does this, uh, the height of this building compare to the office building on Olin? I actually worked on that uh, office building, Santana West. Oh, I believe I it was 100. You. Oh, can you hear me now? Are you there? I can hear you, Alex. You guys can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Don't quote me on this, but I do remember it being about eight stories, and I think it was 108 feet. Um, but if you give me a minute, I will pull that up, Bill, and I can um, confirm that with you. Well, that's coming up. Maybe, Eric, you can tell us the proposed height of the hotel. Yeah, I think we're I think we're coming in at right around ninety feet. And there's a few features that will reach above that, like there's a there's a, a rooftop stair access, for example. There's an elevator overrun which will uh, get a get a a wee bit higher than that. I think the general answer though is that we're lower than the federal real realty building. So far as I know, yeah. So far as we yeah. know, yeah. But we don't I I would I would answer that one if I knew exactly how high that building was. Alec is. I, I'm getting to it, source. but it's deep in deep in my records. That was deep um in records. God, that was 2018. So, <laughs> if you give me a minute, Bill, I will I will come back to you with that answer. Okay, I think I just got my audio working. So, <laughs> thanks for your patience. Yeah, and and I would also note that. For any buildings, gen generally the rule of thumb in the city is that the max height of the building, um, you know, is set by the zoning district and sometimes the urban village plan. But uh, buildings are allowed to go usually 17 feet higher, um, and that's for like mechanical overruns or, or excuse me, elevator overruns, mechanical equipment, things like that. So, Eric, I'm not sure exactly <laughs> where yours came out, but I think. It, the max height is meant to be 85, and then you're allowed to go above that if you have, say, 
a stairwell or an elevator overrun by 17 feet. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that, you know, as living on Hanson, I, I already see the office building from uh, my backyard. Um, mm -hmm. So if it's at that height or higher and, uh, you know, I, it, it kind of for all the residences sort of uh, creates a general lack of privacy <laughs> to have, uh, you know, people looking at your back and front yards and so forth. Um, and uh, I, I guess we can go to somebody else's questions, but uh, I do have some more. Yeah, Bill, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll run to other, uh, a few other people and then we'll come back to you. Sure. All right, let's go to uh, Jane Wolf. Jane, you should be unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, I put 318. That was oh. a mistype. Um, I have Who's several here, yeah. because I live right across the street. Well, not right across the street. I live just down from 390. So one, this is going to be a terrible eyesore. In my opinion, we already, I want to know for one, is the environmental impact include the day, the daylight, um, the effect of daylight on our property. Like when you look at environmental impact, you are going to be blocking a lot of our view. And if you can't tell, I am angry that you would even think of encroaching on our neighborhood for the sake of a hotel. Not only are you trying to change an urban village plan that we already have in place, what's the point in having one? Two, that is a terrible location for a freaking 180 person, 80 room hotel. You are gonna be looking into all of our backyards, all of our front yards, unless you're not gonna have any windows that overlook our neighborhood, there is no way we can defend ourselves, our privacy from this. Two, you're asking to change a daylight, the planning for the daylight purposes. I don't even know. I'm so angry. I can't even think of the term right now. There is no sense. We have all of Winchester. You have all of Stevens Creek where you will not be impacting a tiny neighborhood. Our street is only two streets wide. And Pete, do not drop, do not interrupt me right now. Bill, fortunately, Bill is actually on Hanson. So he will not, he will be impacted, but you will be looking into every single person's homes on SPAR. Do you know how tiny SPAR is to begin with? Once, if you were to change this to a mixed use, God knows how far down SPAR this could change. This is not, this is, I don't care if there's nice wood planking to make it look like it's natural. No hotel is natural in a residential neighborhood, period. Understood. Thank you, Jane. And we'll come back to you if you have any other questions or comments. Next up is Chris. Chris, go for it. Hello, uh, I'm Chris Jean Greco. I'm the vice president of the Neighborhood Association. I've just uh, spent three three days or so reviewing the Urban Village Plan and uh, looking through it. And this Urban Village Plan was one of the first Urban Village Plans that I know of that the city of San Jose actually adopted. And how critical this Urban Village is the economic vitality of San Jose, you know, uh, as a tourist destination with Santana Row and the Mystery House, it's critical that the city of San Jose get things right within our urban village, within the plan, and the plan is highly flawed itself. When we met with the uh, uh, mayor at our neighborhood association meeting just about a week ago, mm -hmm. or so, maybe it was two weeks now, he had mentioned that we are a guinea pig area, you know, and we were one of the first guinea pig areas 
a whole elaborate process went on for months and months and months with the Winchester Advisory Group to lead this urban village plan process in designing the plan that was to be our urban village with the potential to impact our neighborhood so directly. And that whole group went through that entire process. I think it was about a year and a half long process or more trying to hash out what was correct for the urban village, for our city, for our neighborhood. And uh, a lot of those conclusions, hard fought conclusions, highly contested at times, things like building heights, a lot of those issues that consensus was gained on and that were expected to be adopted in the plan were arbitrarily ditched by the urban planning group in charge through the city of San Jose. A lot of those things were arbitrarily changed by the planning department at their whim, apparently, or at their desire. So this plan is highly flawed. And until those flaws are corrected for, problems like we have now with our urban village boundary at the Pulte product or at the Pulte project site may have the opportunity to continue to occur all the way around our urban village, not just in our neighborhood. So for me, in defense of our neighborhood, I think it's very, very important. It's, it's it's critical that the city take this opportunity to really review the urban village plan, amend it how it is necessary to defend our neighborhood and achieve the goals of the city both at the same time. Now, I don't know if this daylight, uh, if the planning issue, that if I lived back there, I certainly wouldn't want that. The planning issues were seriously reviewed in this process and determined to be what they are existing in the plan, right? Or the gen the plan. Now, if the plan, if the city and the developers seek to change that now, it's apparently quite easily, why can't we change every other flaw that's existing in the urban village plan to make it right so that problems don't occur in the future as develop moves as development moves up or around our urban village. So I'm highly concerned about this entire process and the reason, and largely the reason for having to rezone the other Spar and Olin property. If state law requires that use to be up zoned for to exist to allow the existing use that indicates to me that the use that's currently there may not have been in conformance in the past why would this why would the city have to use state law to up zone something to make it correct was the city at fault for allowing that business type to exist on that property in the first place so this whole thing is highly concerning to me, and I've called for the municipality through the District 1 office with the former vice mayor and his staff to really collaborate with the neighborhood to get things right for our community and not just our neighborhood, for the city. If the urban village plan gets incorrectly applied or flaws in the plan are allowed to dictate the future of the of the growth, where are we at as a city, as citizens, as a neighborhood, as an urban village? So I'm highly concerned and we intend to fully participate in this project, this process for both properties to make sure that the city gets it right for the neighborhood first and the urban village second and the developer third. So that's where we're at with it. And this meeting as a public meeting, it should be made available on YouTube for everybody to see instead of just recorded and hidden away so that nobody can refer to this in the future. There should be an urban village 
an urban village YouTube page on the city link to the city's page where all the meetings like this should be made publicly available and that would make it comp in compliance with the city's open government policies. We've had so much problem with the city actually applying its own open government policies to itself. And that should end here with this meeting. So please make understood. It Thank you, Chris. I, I want to give some other people some time to speak, but we, we can come back to you for sure. Absolutely. I, I understand. Thank you. Thank you for letting me talk. Thanks. No, of course. And good to see you again, Chris. We'll uh we'll be back to talk about Century 21 pretty soon, hopefully. Um, so next up is Leslie Duquette. Leslie, go for it. Leslie, can you hear us? You're unmuted. If not, let's try this. I'm going to promote you to panelist, Leslie. Oh, hold on. Now can you hear oh, me? There we go. Yeah, that works. Okay. Nice. Okay. okay. Um, my first thing that I wanted to point out was that the little card you sent to all of us in the neighborhood had the wrong day on it. So you probably don't have as many people on this meeting from this neighborhood as you would if it didn't say Thursday, September 25th, instead of Monday, September 25th. Um, aside from that, um, I agree with everything everybody else has said. I live on Spar Avenue, right smack dab in the middle. All of the um, things you guys did to the roads to supposedly make traffic stay out of our neighborhood has caused our neighborhood to have probably three times as much traffic as it ever had in the past. You have basically blocked off Hanson at the end. So cars that get told by ways to go down Hanson have to U-turn by that time they're pissed off that they didn't get through. They come speeding down Spar Avenue at a minimum of 45 miles per hour. And then you put in these God awful eyesight, little yellow, posty things to try and avoid people to turn avoid people from turning left into our neighborhood they just drive around them it's it, everything that's happened so far with this big building at the end that's going to stay vacant for god knows how long now has had an impact on our neighborhood and now you're going to take this little office building which is actually a house and turn it into a parking to, um, garage for the hotel I mean you guys can make it sound all as pretty and fluffy and whatever as you want but we don't want a freaking parking lot on the end of our street they're going to turn into our neighborhood the hotel's going to be too tall they're going to see god forbid the lady who lives next door they're going to see right in her backyard the office building can already see in all of our backyards and like Jane said we have no sun at the end of the day our son is gone because of the building. Now you're going to put another building on the other corner, which is the only other place we get it from. And it, there are so many street, uh, so many businesses out of business on Winchester. Go that direction. Don't come into our neighborhood. I'm done. <laughs> Understood. Thank you, Leslie. And um, Rena, can you just maybe confirm that? 390 spar is not actually being developed. Can you maybe just go over that again? Correct, sure. It's gonna be the parking garage. Um, so my understanding is that 390 Spar Avenue, and I wonder if I can annotate. Oh, I can't annotate. Um, well, essentially 390 Spar Avenue. So if you look at the image on the slide right now, the yellow, it says site, and then to the left of that. Um, on Olin in uh, Spar. Yes, uh, thank you so much. That one is going to remain that building that is exists right now. Uh, it is not going to be converted into a parking lot, I believe. You and just said. Alec, can you verify that for me as well? Yeah, so that site is not being developed. Yes. Just the site that's highlighted is what will be developed with the hotel, Leslie. Eric, can okay, you switch, well, could you switch to the site plan, Eric, with the building on it? Thank you. What is that? 
the the proposed uh, hotel is along Winchester primarily, and then it actually steps back from the property line along Olin. Uh, the this is three ninety spar, I believe, unless somebody yes yes correct me or if that yes stuff is not coming through the right way, which is possible. That is correct. That's 390 SPAR. And there is, Leslie, there is only a general plan amendment on that site. And a rezoning is required by state law because there is a general plan change. But there is no development proposed on that site. There is a office building there built in 1980s. And it is going to stay as it is. So, okay. So I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, but um okay. i'm sorry I, I misunderstood the way the picture was but it sounded like the parking garage was going to go in that so her that building's actually going to stay yes the corner the 390 spar avenue that site is not part of this project this okay. hotel hotel project yeah it's going okay. to stay as it is well i still feel all the same way about the parking and the hotel and <laughs> whatever i just i thought the way I was looking at the picture, which was completely incorrect, was that the parking part of it was going on 390. Uh, so I, you know, the the I could maybe jump in uh, here for the for the hotel. The parking uh, that is being built as part of the hotel development is actually underneath the hotel. It'd be a subterranean level, just one level. So that won't be that actually the parking that we're constructing as part of the project won't be visible at all. It also might help Eric if you clarify that that gray area is just a two story element that it's not the full height. Oh, and if you can yeah, kind of walk through a, that. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, here you saw the uh, the image which had the the contemplative pool deck of what I like to call it. The, the pool is about right there. So it's a good point, uh, Pete, here in, in green. Uh, this level right here is uh, is actually only two, about two stories that will top out at about 28 feet to the top of the, to the top of the privacy wall that we'll build. I hope that I do hope that helps somewhat. There's there are right, some so that, other examples. So there's a screen wall around this deck yeah. that's taller than people so that people won't be able to look from the second floor out into the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they will from their windows of their hotel. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to show that it's there's a lower section on that back side. That's my main point. Yeah. yeah. And maybe um Sunita, can you or Arena? Can you confirm that we'll also be offering something on Thursday as well? Yes, I can confirm that. That um, Leslie, thank you. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I. No problem. Uh, we are. Uh, yeah, we are sorry that there was a um, typographical error on that card, and so on Thursday, Rena and I will be available. We will. We will not be conducting the whole meeting, but we will be available to talk to whoever that shows in shows up that day. And we'll give them our contact information and the recording of the meeting would be available and they could ask us any questions that day or later on. Thank you. All right, let's go. Anybody else who hasn't spoken yet, would you like to speak? Um, let's see. I think has Chris, Chris, you spoke already. Hold on. Let's go back through this. Anybody who hasn't spoken yet, would you like to speak? Otherwise, I'm going to go back through again. Um, OK, let's go. Bill, you had your hand up first. Bill? Can you hear me OK? Bill, if you're there. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. OK. Um, so I, I had some other questions, but the uh, kind of elephant in the room is, you know, why are they asking to rezone 390 SPAR? So 
staff or the applicant, you guys want to answer? Bueller, anyone? I think I think that's and probably best to to be handled by staff. Sunita Arena, would you would you like to take this? Sure. So um the Santanaro Urban Village Plan, as Rena had showed in her presentation, has certain requirements for sites that are located next to um, residential neighborhood uh, designated properties and other properties like commercial or any other property. So as part of the discussion, uh, one of the options for the applicant was that if this corner parcel um, can be the general plan is changed from residential neighborhood, then the um, developing standards for the sent for the um, urban village plan uh, would be applicable for this site as as it's current on that corner parcel only, and as you can see that the. Um, so since the general plan, the, the short answer for the zoning change is that because the general plan is being changed, the zoning has to be changed. That is a state law, but the general plan is being changed or proposed to be changed because of the development standards. Um, so, so is it I only because the setback is less uh, that they need that? to be zoned differently in order to push up closer to that property line? The setback and the daylight plan requirements are different for properties that are not residentially designated. Yes. So what about the property right next door to it? Uh, that is a, still a residential property and it's still got the same issues with a daylight plane and a setback. You're right. Me, Eric, can you show us the plan? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Eric, can you please go back to the plan view? Yes. So, Bill, as you can see on this plan, the building, the L-shaped portion that's in dark mm. lines, that's the taller part of the building. And the little rectangular gray portion, that's two stories high. Yeah, that portion. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, as you can see, the second property and the third property along SPAR, are the ones that have or will have residential designation and currently has so. And the building is set back way away from there. But it certainly makes 390 SPAR more vulnerable to future much greater development? Uh, in a way, yes, it does allow more development than that is allowed on residential neighborhood general plan designation. Um, the property is currently used for, and as I said before, that uh, office building was built on this property with permits in 1980s, and it's yeah. used currently as an office. Did the uh, the applicant or the uh, architects take a look at adjacent properties along Winchester uh, in order to stay within the urban village requirements of site plan and setbacks? That's a question for the um, applicant. Do you, do I can you take a shot at that, Mark, if you want, or you can, if you prefer. Oh, Pete, thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to answer that question. Uh, the property that uh, that I purchased is, is the corner lot that you're seeing today. Uh, very early in the process, I approached the property owner to the north of the site to see if there was any opportunity for an acquisition of that particular parcel. And at that time was told that, no, we are moving forward with our own application for a residential uh, project. And so they moved forward on that side and I've been moving forward uh, with our parcel um, on a standalone basis. Okay, thank you. Um, so, and, and one more question. Uh, what about noise from the, I know you're doing the environmental impact study or whatever it's called, um, the preliminary study. Uh, is there any kind of restriction about what kinds of noise are allowed there in terms of 
I don't know, live music, nightclubs on the very top floor. Uh, as much as I like live music as much as anybody, I don't know all the neighbors uh, share that opinion. Um, and what kind of restrictions are in place along those lines? Because you are very, very close to these uh, residences. Sure, I can take just the first uh, sequence specific portion to the noise. Thanks for the question. Um, so this project um, was evaluated and does not result in any significant and unavoidable noise impacts. Um, that would be primarily from construction, noise, uh, demolition, things like that. Um, and then the city, I'll let uh, either Alec or someone else touch on. Um, we do have our noise standards for different areas. Um, so all of those things would still need to be complied with um, at the site. Yeah, I would actually go to the applicant quick and just say, you know, is, are any of the, the patio areas is that going to be publicly accessible in any way? Uh, the pool deck, that area? Uh, no, the, the current plan for the pool deck is that it would be for guests only, although mm -hmm. it could be made available for private private bookings or or get togethers gatherings this sort of thing uh, I don't I don't believe we're requesting any kind of waivers or deviations from noise standards that the city has right yeah um, so so Eric just to piggyback off that so there in urban village zoning districts was this site already exists in um, there is no uh, noise limit for the um, municipal code. So it is set by by CEQA, what Court had mentioned earlier. Um, what we do have standards for is if there are, say, public patios or anything like that within 150 feet of a residence. Um, but in this case, it's not going to be publicly accessible. So there's the city doesn't have any regulation over that. Right. Um, so the hotel can I do guess the only, want in that respect. Yeah, I mean, if it presents a, a public nuisance, I mean, that's... Really, be within your rights to, you know, take it up with code enforcement, but just in terms of the development review process, um, yeah, we don't we don't have any code requirements for urban village zoning districts when it comes to noise. Um, only if there's, say, like a restaurant that's publicly accessible there, then we would be able to regulate that, if that makes sense. Okay, so any public that's... use would be confined to the first floor. Right. So maybe the next question I was going to ask Eric is like, so say that um, like the bar area or the hotel bar, like, would that be publicly accessible? Like, could I walk in there and get a beer? You know, you could walk in there and get a beer. Yes. Yeah. So then in that case, you know, what the city regulates is say you wouldn't be allowed to have any outdoor seating um, any any time past midnight um, while you're operating, say, that public establishment. That would be that would be what the city would regulate, Bill. I'd just be interested to see what Kirk and Jesse have to say about it. I wouldn't yeah. think a hotel like this would really want to have live music, but maybe, um, I don't know. It depends on that hotel. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys, this is uh, this is Kirk Pedersen with Sightline. Um, Bill, I, I understand your question completely. The pool deck area really isn't large enough to hold any kind of gathering of, of, of scale. Uh, the intention there is to provide an amenity for the hotel guests to have an outdoor space where they can lounge um, and, you know, get together with you know, family and friends during the day. There really is no intent there to do, you know, like you would see a rooftop bar or anything like that. It's just not, it's not large enough and you're sitting right there next to a residential community. That was never the plan at all. Uh, I can see uh, you know, a small, you know, corporate group function having a cocktail uh, hour out there for an hour or two hours, uh, but no live music. Uh, that's not the intent for that space. We really tried to uh, push the community space to the ground floor um, and feel it, you know, make, make that feel much more village-like uh, and walkable so that you, even from your neighborhood, could walk over and walk into the ground floor and it could feel like a neighborhood restaurant. Uh, that's really the intent of the space downstairs. And even with mm -hmm. the footprint of the ground floor, it really doesn't lend itself to a large gathering. It's a pretty small area. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, let's move on. We have somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Um, David Duquette. David, please unmute yourself. Uh, do you hear me now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So first off, I, I want to I want to thank the city officials for explaining uh, the this proposed project. Um, I, I think it's I think all of us have a pretty good understanding of what's what's being presented. Um, uh, so first off, the, the 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 card that we were sent really is a big deal. Uh, so so I want to everyone to understand that we are not getting the proper amount of people responding to this proposal because it says Thursday. Okay. And, and, and that's kind of a big deal because this neighborhood is, it, we're directly being affected, not only our, our quality of life, but our, our financial well being. I mean, we are being closed in on three sides. The traffic that comes through our neighborhood is insane. The, you know, the, the actual climate itself has changed. And, and this is with the building, it's still vacant. I cannot believe what it's going to be like when that thing is full. Because the traffic through here, the wind patterns have changed, the sun patterns have changed, everything has changed. And this is an old county, single family neighborhood. It's a lovely place to live. That's why I'm here. And, and we're slowly getting chipped away at. And so, so this, this uh, proposal here, and, and I, I think, you know, as, as everywhere has always, you got to follow the money trail. Okay. So 390 and 382 are, are, or were owned by the same family. So there's no reason. I mean, there's, 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 there's clear reason why they're not opposed to this. Okay. And, and once you, once you rezone 390, you rezone 390. That is uh, a property that is, it's not being utilized to its full potential. And as soon as that thing is rezoned, you know what's going up. It's going to go higher. And so we're going to get slowly chipped away on. And okay, now, okay, 390. What about 382, right? It's, it, you know, I know there's some sort of agreement with that and the developer because there's an agreement now between that and the developer of some kind. Okay, so then, okay, go through 82. We're slowly getting eaten up over here. There's a reason why we did the urban village plan. We did the urban village plan and it was a painstaking process with ample properties up and down Winchester and Stevens Creek with more than enough room to do this project without having to change site plans. Uh, site planes without having to go an extra level, uh, you know, another 20 feet up in the air. It's unfair. It's unjust. And, and we're the small guys over here getting eaten alive. So I don't appreciate it. Um, I'm sick of it. There there's more enough areas where this can, this project can be done or scale this project down. You don't need to go, uh, um, you know, 90 feet take it to 70 or you know you don't need to go seven stories how about five or six that's already been gone through we've done all this homework so i i just i just i want our city officials to to do what we have already gone through we've already been through this all this has all been approved I don't want my neighborhood, my neighborhood chipped away even more. And, and we don't even know the full impact of this yet. We don't know what the full impact on our neighborhood is because the projects aren't even occupied yet. The current ones. Um, it, it's just, it, it's, it's all too much. It's all too much. And it's all just, it's just straight up unfair and unjust. And and so uh, this neighborhood is going to fight this because like I said, it's just, we're, we're being encroached on too much. And I, I guess that's it. Understood. Thank, thank you, David. Appreciate your words. Um, let's go on to another person who hasn't spoken yet. Linda Scanlon. Linda, you are unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Great. Can you go back to uh, the plan number two, picture number two? That one, yes. Okay. Um, I live 
further down at the end of the block on Maplewood. My home is the second home in directly behind the five story parking garage. Okay. And when I heard about this new plan and the building and the changing of the zoning of 390 SPAR, um, my red flags went up primarily because I feel as the neighbors do on Spar and probably on Hanson as we do on Maplewood. The urban village plan back 20 some years ago when we start when they started approaching us with this and telling us about it, you know, everybody thought, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be grand. But then you get everybody's hands involved in it. And then you start getting <clears throat> certain amount of changes and graft and things that don't go right. But my main concern right now is we're looking at this hotel. Then you're looking at 390 SPAR that's having its zoning change because they said they have to take down some trees. But I also heard in there that it means, pardon me, that that will open it up for future a future development, commercial development, which it already is on commercial development. So my concern is that that is going to continue to encroach down the street. If you go directly across um, SPAR, continue down Olin, you have another house that is a com commercial uh, establishment right now with a chiropractor and several other people involved in there. That's also a, a possibility to go into commercial building if somebody decides to sell that. Behind that building is another uh, form of care center. I don't know if it's a child day care center or if it's an, a, now an adult center, uh, but I'm saying that what is considered, I believe, also commercial. So what's happening is like the previous people have said, we are slowly but surely being encroached on. And that is a major concern for all of us that live in this area because the urban village was supposed to be, the whole purpose was to get people out of cars and to get them to be living in the neighborhood and shopping in the neighborhood. But believe me, 90% of the people who live in urban villages don't work here. They don't work there. They come from every other place except where they're living, if they live here. So our concern is, again, continuing amount of traffic, amount of people, that it's it's not like it was planned to be and that we were told it was going to be. And with this situation now, I see this 390 as you're saying, no, nothing's going to happen to it. I don't believe that for a minute. I do believe that this 390 is definitely going to be in the near future, will all of a sudden be developed into another part of the urban village. And you go across the street, I think that's also going to be taken over. So as the neighbors are feeling, they're being encroached on. And I believe that since we live at the end of Maplewood, that it's not far off from, from, from being right Right now, it's in our backyard. Next, next, I know it's going to be on my doorstep. So, uh, I am more more concerned also that we have another uh, meeting uh, held and that the correct information is given out. Because believe me, I got my notice and I was totally confused. It was brought up in our WONA meeting how the information was wrong. It took me over 35 minutes in order to online to try and get to this meeting. So on top of everything else, I tried all of your sites, all of the things in blue, could not get on to get to this meeting. So uh, finally made it at 637. So um, that's my concern. Again, like with everybody else, is the encroachment. Again, the more traffic, the more people. Um, also, when you have another hotel, you're going to be having more opportunity for people to come in and uh, burglarize, vandalize. I'm very concerned about all of that because I see it just right off of it, it, in the areas itself. And that's it just means more and more of this is just going to be coming in to our into our backyards. So that's that's mainly what I have to say. So thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. 
Um, I want to be conscious of everybody's time. So maybe Mark or Eric, do you have any final parting words, parting thoughts, um, maybe any responses? I just thank everybody for sharing their comments. Uh, it's important that you're uh, that you heard and I uh, appreciate your time this evening. Uh, Alec, I would also like to uh, thank the community members that uh, uh, were here this evening, and I apologize for the, the date uh, being different on uh, the actual date versus um, being Thursday. When I saw the notice come out, I don't send the notices out, but when I saw it out, the first call I made was the city to make sure that they were aware of that particular typographical error. The, the amount of work that has gone in with, with the city staff and the consultants, the environmental consultants studying the, the traffic patterns that are existing today, plus the cumulative traffic uh, given when that office building is on Olin is 100% occupied. Those are the types of things that are studied um, extensively on this project. As, as was mentioned, our parking is designed to be below grade um, at this time. We also have uh, a signalized intersection at Winchester Nolan, which will be uh, utilized from the uh, hotel with the not only the valet uh, operation, but also those that are leaving the, the uh, hotel to get back out to Winchester and either going uh, south towards uh, highway 280 or or north uh, so there isn't any need for the hotel guests to traverse through the community and understand that the design of the hotel and i've been very pleased with uh Lowney and associates uh, work on the on the hotel being sensitive uh, to the surrounding residential units designing the building as an l-shaped uh building uh, to keep the separation from the residents um, on SPAR as best as possible. We do have a commercial uh, building that are, is our interface on the L portion of the property. And that is why that uh, particular designation was is being modified. So we have a commercial space uh, and property being interfaced with the other commercial element to it. So... We appreciate the uh, the time this evening, and uh, of course, we'll address uh, any questions that staff uh, has for us as we continue to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, and then maybe I'll ask the vice mayor, Jr. You guys have any any um, parting thoughts, questions, anything for us? Um, I would like to also thank the community for uh, sharing their thoughts uh, with us and. Uh, what I, I would do is uh, encourage you to continue if there are other things that weren't covered uh, to contact staff and certainly um, uh, my office if there's anything that we could do. Thank you. I'll echo the, the vice mayor's comments. I've been taking lots of notes on everything that everyone has said, but you know, if there are other folks who haven't had the chance to say everything that they wanted to say, or if you've got friends or neighbors who wanted to offer something, my email is available to you. Thank you. Yeah, and on that note, too, I've put our uh, contact info up as well for, for city staff. Um, and then again, I wanted to note, yeah, so we will also be hosting the Zoom on Thursday as well. Um, Sunita, can you just uh, confirm that real quick? Yes, uh, we will be hosting a meeting the time that was um, identified at the same time as today, but on Thursday. Uh, and whoever is uh, available that day or will be showing up can will be talking to them. Also, the um, recording of the meeting would be available and we'll be sharing with any of you who want to send us email. Uh, but we'll see where we can post it on the website. But um, otherwise, it will be available for you or any of your neighbors and friends. Right on. Thank you, Sunita. Yep, so I, I will leave our contact info up um, for a few more minutes. And um, I just wanted to thank everybody for coming. We really appreciate it. On the city side, we really appreciate everybody's thoughts um, and comments. And please do feel free to reach out to any of us. So just a friendly reminder, uh, Alec Atienza, Planning Project Manager, and I'm working on the development application. And we have Rina Hori here. She's, wait, she waved to the camera. 
Rena is working on the general plan and text amendments. 